Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Asitan Nomani Rat uh, from College of Aviation Development and Training, Duraki Bandit University. So today, my research is about the perception of passengers on long haul flights through different term proceeds. So this is the content outline that I'm going to talk about today. So we start with uh, introduction. Uh, when we are talking about travel, most passengers might think about in-flight service quality, such as the selections of food and beverage, varieties of in-flight entertainment, like good music, nice movie, and even the Wi-Fi service, cause some passengers might need that during the flight. And also the comfortable seats, especially the one that have the economic design. All these in-flight services makes passengers want to sleep or sit down for a long period of time. And it may cause different thrombosis or DVT. We call it DVT for short. So DVT thrombosis is the formation of blood clot in the deep vein, most commonly in the legs. The symptoms can include pain, swelling, redness, warm or hot and enlarged vein in the affected area. Deep vein thrombosis can also occur without noticeable symptoms. And uh, the long haul flight or multiple flights in a short period can be associated with deep vein thrombosis. When the leg is bent at the knee for a long period without moving, may affect blood flow and cause blood clots. Some of you might experience some numbs or, or when you sit for a long time with the same position, you might feel that, that the same thing that happened to, to the passenger who have the blood clot. Uh, other factor can raise the risk, such as the recent surgery, taking contraceptive pills, pregnancy, cancer, heart problems, and older age. Moreover, inherited and genetic factors may also play a big role. And we move to the objectives of this research. So uh, the first objective is to explore the perception of passenger on long haul flight to a different term proceeds. And the second one is the purpose to propose the prevention of different term proceeds for passenger on long haul flights. And right here um, is a research questions. So there are two research questions. The first one, how much perceptions of passengers on long haul flights to different time process? And the second one is, uh, do passengers on long haul flights know how to prevent themselves from different time process? Um, and here is about the materials and methods. Uh, this research used mixed uh, methodology, which included both quantitative and qualitative research. Creating each questionnaire was based on uh, protection motivation theory and journal study. The protection motivation theory was founded by Rogers in 1975. It's a major health uh, psychology theory that explain why people en um, engage in unhealthy practices and offer suggestions for changing those behaviors. The passengers traveling more than five hours on international flight were the population of this research. The amount of uh, 385 passengers on long haul international flights was the sample for quantitative research. The sample size was calculated by Cochrane. Uh, formula. In addition, in-depth interview was used for qualitative research with 10 passengers on long-haul international flights. The, interview, uh, the interviews range from 20 to 30 minutes. Those 10 passengers include two elderly, two obesity, two pregnant ladies, two smokers, and two alcoholic. And uh, we uh, I'd like to present about the results and discussion. So the results have been divided into four parts. The first part is about the general information. Most of the sample, 52.89% were female. 40% were the age of 20 to 30 years old. The same number, 40%, for the pri um, they are working for the private company. And the frequency of flying once or twice a year. 
78.44%. Now the second part is about the medical his, uh, history. More sample did not have um, history of surgery, 57.14%, nor family history of clots, 91.43%. And they did not smoke, 81.30%, or drink alcohol. Uh, they don't drink alcohol, uh, 62.86%. Uh, the amount of 357 or 92.73% of passengers did not take con contraceptive pills. And the third part is about the perception of passenger curativity. Likert scale was used in this part to scale the perception of the sample. This part consisted, uh, consisted of 15 questions. Question one to five, asking passengers about the description, causes, symptoms, treatments, and prevention of TBT. And the interpretation were low. Uh, question number six to question eight, asking about uh, the occurrence of DVT, smoking and taking contraceptive pills can cause DVT. Question number nine, did the airline give passenger information about what to do for a long, uh, for a good health during the flight? And question number 10, asking passenger, did they get enough information from the airline about DVT? And the interpretation for these questions were low. On this page, you can see the different interpre uh, interpretations because question number 12, 13, and 15 got neutral. That means the, that means the sample know that the behaviors of each person, like sitting for a long period of time without moving legs and drinking enough water during the long flights, affects the occurrence of DVT compared to other questions because the interpretation of, um, of other questions is still low. Now we are on part four, suggestions and comments through the different purposes of passenger on long haul flights. The suggestions and comments were grouped as follow. The first one, airline should provide information about DVT for passenger 48%. Second, passenger did not know about DVT and they would like to know how to prevent DVT 35%. Uh, the third one, behavior could be the main point of being healthy 10%. Meanwhile, the research of Al Gatani at or in um, 2012 presented that increasing people's awareness about dealing with risks perceptions should be done by the official sources with the proper information. This information supports the suggestion and comment number one. Now, um, for the qualitative data, in-depth interview was used to gain qualitative data. The, uh, the, the sample were divided into five groups and there were two persons for of each group. The sample included elderly, smokers, alcoholics, obese, and pregnant ladies. Only one out of 10 who knows about DVT and the rest of them had no idea what DVT was even they were in the risk group of getting DVT. The passenger would like to know more about the information and how to prevent themselves from DVT by all means of communication from the airlines. And since the results reveal that most of the sample has no, has no, uh, had low perception of DVT, these are suggestions to reduce the risk of DVT. So the first one, you need to walk around the cabin during the flight as often as possible when it's safe to do so. It means when the seatbelt sign goes off. Second, refrain from crossing your legs. Third one, refrain from wearing tight clothes that can affect blood flow. And the fourth one, refrain from drinking alcohol before and during the flight. Uh, the fifth, uh, keep yourself hydrated by drinking water. And the last one, stretching, stretch your legs and move it while sitting. And right here, 
Um, the picture show you some exercise to keep blood flowing and reduce the risk of clot. The passenger may easily do it during the flight. Um, so alternately pulling the heel up, the picture on, on the left, and then lift the toe, the picture on the right. These help increase blood flow in the calf vein and also decrease the risk of forming blood clots. So it's very easy to do that. So just keep yourself doing this if you have the, fl uh, the long flight. So this get away of the DVT for you. Now we come to the conclusion. Um, the perception of passenger to deep vein thrombosis is important for air travel, especially for the long haul flight. This research found that most passengers had low perception to DVT. The results lead to the suggestion that airlines should provide more information about DVT for passengers. And being healthy during a long flight is what passengers prefer. No one wants to get sick during the flight, of course. <laughs> and there is more advice to stay away from DVT, such as um, keep hydrated by drinking water, avoid drinking alcohol drinks, avoid crossing legs for a long period. Try to stretch and move feet while seated or walk around the cabin if possible. And last but not least, I would like to thank you, Rangsit University, Associate <laughs> Professor Dr. Ganda and Dr. Prapunchita Puta for giving me this chance to make me be here today. And thank you for your support from Dr. Watana and my co-author. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Well, I have one question. Yes. As, as you can see from the from your presentation that there are more than five risk groups to get deep vein thrombosis. Can yes. you please tell me why do you choose only five groups of, for this research? Mm, to be honest, uh, for for the, the five group that I choose because it's very easy for you when you want when you want to ask someone questions. So you you need to test them by the uh, physical appearance, let's say pregnant ladies, you're very easy to know who is pregnant or even uh, or passenger <laughs> or even very easy to ask who is drinking or who is smoking. But when you think about who have to cancel or who have the heart problem, it's very hard for you to, to judge who get that condition. But actually it might be the future research for me to get all the risk group of these um, uh, passengers who, who, uh, who are at the risk group of uh, getting DVT. Okay, I hope this you. answer my, uh, answer your question. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that, that's fair enough. And that, what you have said is, is uh, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. One more? Yes, please. Is it, uh, completely, completely in the international conference. So I have to join to ask uh, Jan Puri. That's what she called. <laughs> Jan Puri, I can't thank you very much. I'm, 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 I was a leader of this topic too. And, but, but I forgot to, I, I thank you for the good example picture that you can explain our passengers, even though leg exercise for air travel, even though bus travel, train travel is a long, 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 long uh, distance too. Okay. Yes. You, thank you very much. That's a very good picture, and uh, congratulations. And I, I asked you about the um, the research, the meaning of neutron and low. What are different than neutron and low? Can you um, low? That means uh, the low perception. So most of the passenger, I mean, most of the simple of my research, they got low perception of the the DVT. But neutron that means they have some information. You know. Um, let's say uh, uh, question number 12, they're asking the, the passengers to know how to uh, be healthy during the flight by drinking water. Some mm. of them know that's a good practice for them during the long flight. Avoid drinking alcohol, avoid drinking um, other drinks than uh, mineral water or just still water. But, but uh, the deep vein thrombosis in Thai, we say cellular deep or cellular for that. Uh, uh, oh, okay, okay, thank you. Okay, that's right. Okay, I forgot it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, keep hydrated. You mean you drink water? Yes, water is the best. Okay, good. Have to 
the walk to the toilet every time. Yeah? <laughs> but it's okay. Um, better <laughs> getting DVT later. <laughs> so if I if I was a traveling day, I I I I I don't mean to, I I don't have the deep vein thrombosis because I might go to the toilet every every hours. Yes, that's hours. a good point. That's a good point of <laughs> drinking water. Keep drinking okay, water. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, any question? Also, I, I, I want to one question. Yes, please. Uh, okay. Alcoholic is a key for deep vein thrombosis. Are you? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, this is a research uh, applied to the guideline in this airline. Uh, actually, it's a good point that if the airline think about that and very concerned about it because um, what I asked the sample of my research, they said they don't see any information, but some of them, they might see that uh, on the screen during the flight, but it's not very obvious. So if you don't concentrate with that, you don't do, you, you will not know what it's about. But it's a good point that all the airlines uh, give more information about DVT to the passenger. Doesn't matter before the flight, during the flight, or even after the flight. It's a good point for passenger. It's a good benefit for the passenger to know that because it's very dangerous for, for their life if that happened to them. So yeah, at least it's good for them to know about it. Mr. Chairman, so, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Okay. Chairman, I think that's uh, Ajahn Sasitorn. <laughs> she was a uh, air hostess before. How many okay. years you, you, you do, did you do in, in Air Hostess? I think uh, seven years. Seven years. You have ever faced this problem? Uh, actually, I got once on my flight oh, from see. Dubai to San Francisco. It's a long flight, 16 hours, and we get the old, old lady who suffer from DVT. So we need to take care of her. We need to raise her legs and keep her drinking water, and we just check her. So we try our best to help her with this. And even mm -hmm. we even contact the doctor on ground to talk with the doctor what to do with her. But at least we need to ensure, we need to be with her all the time. So talk to her, it's going to be okay, don't worry. But actually, um, to be honest, I was so worried. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. want the bad thing happen to her. <laughs> okay. I think even though in the air crew too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's right? Air crew, yes. air crew too. Okay. Yes. So yeah. that's every time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sherman. Okay.